Hello there. Uh, let's see if I can get a do presentation without taking too long to go to it. All right, uh, so we're going to do, you know, good. I'm going to look at the media for a little bit. It's a neat uh, topic. You know, you've got, if you look at what we did this semester, you know, we did some political philosophers and then kind of foundations, you know, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution. Uh, and then we kind of go back and forth between kind of politics and institutions. Uh, and so we did, what, political parties, and we did the president, uh, and then we did interest groups, and we've done Congress. Um, and so now we're kind of looking at the media. The media, political parties, and uh, interest groups in, in the AP curriculum, the AP government curriculum. I really don't hear it called this outside of this curriculum, but they call it linkage institutions. In other words, their job is to link the people uh, with the government. Um, so, I, I mean, I'd say this is the last of the Lincoln's institutions. And so we'll do one. We'll do, I, I believe I got like a couple of days worth of media. Um, so we'll do one today. If we got anything else to do with it, and I'm not sure, but I think uh, we might have, it's like maybe five or six headings worth of media stuff. So then we'll start on the judicial branch next time, and then we'll judicial it all the way to the end. Uh, there'll be some judicial stuff, and then you get like civil liberties and civil rights. And that's just really, really fun. Uh, and it takes a while. Uh, and so, I mean, that, that'll kind of take us close to the end, uh, you know, on the end of May, and you know, we'll see where we are. All right, but let's talk a little bit of medium. Um, the more things change, the more they stay the same, maybe, or continuity and change in history. Our first press was very partisan. So the, the press of today has kind of evolved into a press that was very much like the press of our nation's founding. So, I mean, if somebody was to say, I can't believe they're so partisan, didn't used to be this way. Well, that's kind of true and false. Uh, initially, they were exactly this way. So there was a Federalist. Uh, set of newspapers there. The, the Federals had their own bars, you know, taverns that they hung out in and hated on the Republicans. And then the, there were there was Democrat Republican uh, newspapers. Um, if you know the Hamilton story, the Alexander Hamilton uh, biography, he was really killed in a duel over the, you know, the partisanship. And um, one thing he would do. Uh, to his political opponents was he would be all right and everybody would do this it's kind of like so I don't know what you'd call it social media uh, today but you know they they'd publish things about their political enemies but they'd sign it with a pseudonym you know kind of like people do when they post stuff uh, and so that kind of just like today it allowed people to say even nastier things about each other uh, so the first press was very very partisan all right so then you move forward in history to the age of Jackson the 1830s uh, and remember, the, if you remember uh, your history from, from last year, the, the age of Jackson was kind of the age of the common man. And so uh, in the 1830, everybody, you had cheap newspapers, the penny press, they called it. And if the common man was going to have the right to vote, the common man needed to be informed. So, all right, so the emphasis in the age of Jackson is a little less partisan and a little more towards you know, this educational function for uh, average folks. All right. Uh, in the late 1800s, you get two sets of journalists back-to-back. -back. Uh, the Yellow Press, uh, and they're going to sensationalize things. They're kind of like, well, they're kind of like the press today to an extent, kind of like, you know, the tabloids. Uh, they felt like if they exaggerated a little bit, you know, they could sell more newspapers. Uh, and you may remember the Yellow Press. Uh, one of the New York publishers of the Yellow Press was a guy named Pulitzer. The Pulitzer Prize, ironically, is named after him. And his rival was a name, guy named Hearst, who's kind of credited with starting the Spanish-American War. Remember, the Spanish-American War started when a ship called the, the Maine sunk. And it's basically because the, the Maine was not a very good boat, but the... Uh, the yellow journalists uh, blamed it on the Spanish and they kind of started that war. All right, so then uh, coming out of that, you got the muckrakers, and that they, these are these reformers. Uh, this is the progressive era, and the you know, these the 
Um, you know, they feel like if they shine the light on the problems of kind of the Gilded Age, the, uh, the political and the economic problems, the poverty of the cities, uh, that people want to, uh, to fix these problems. So, you know, these were uh, journalists who kind of saw themselves as, as reformers. They were kind of left to center, you know, kind of like uh, uh, a lot of today's press is perceived to be. Okay, then you got the 50s. All right, uh, coming out of World War II, uh, and it's a time of a lot of consensus, and so the, uh, the newspapers tried to be objective on the, right under the New York Times, like right, right under that, it says all the news that's fit to print. In other words, they're not going to exaggerate, you know, they're not going to have a bias, they, I mean, that's, that's, that's their goal. Um, so, you know, they, they kind of want to be like a, like a detective on an old detective movie and just kind of report uh, the facts. We still have media like that. Uh, the Wire Services, the Associated Press, the United Press International, uh, they'll send national stories to local newspapers like the Calhoun Times. And so these uh, local newspapers may be in real conservative areas or real liberal areas. So they've got to be, uh, you know, straight down the middle so as not to uh, offend anybody. So they try to, you know, they're, they're kind of uh, just the facts. Uh, first newsman I remember in the 1970s, a guy named Rock, Walter uh, Cronkite. Uh, was the most trusted man in America, they used to say about him. Uh, famous for uh, breaking the news that Kennedy uh, had been assassinated. Uh, and so just really, really respected uh, member of the media. I believe he was the... Uh, what does it say there? A I can't remember if it was ABC or uh, CBS. I think it was ABC. All right. It's out here. It's cold. I'm making the thing outside, uh, so I'm sniffing. I'm sorry. Okay. So I'm going to sniff. Breathe a second. All right. Uh, okay. So we'll call this one a number two. Can I call it a number two? I should have. Sorry. I should have put my... There we go. How long will it take to pull it back up? All right. Uh, okay. So uh, the media today, today's media sees itself as kind of having three roles. Um, the first role, the one it really takes seriously, is a, it's a watchdog. This comes out of Watergate, really, since the 1970s. Uh, you know, the government has a lot of power. So the role of the media is to kind of let us know if that power is getting out of hand. Uh, these two reporters over here on the right, and do I have my, I don't know, got those two guys over there on the right. Uh, there it is. There we go. Um, are known for, uh, they're, they're the guys who broke the Watergate case. They had this source in the government. He, he leaked information to uh, the media. Uh, the guy was called Deep Throat. Oddly, strangely, strange, strange story. We we found the guy. We, he he was a mystery. Nobody knew who he was until oh ten years ago or so. I believe his name was Mark Felt. Uh, but since Watergate, reporters kind of want to be these two guys, all right? Uh, and so that kind of accounts for the negativity to an extent of the uh, of what the. Uh, what the stories, what the, the, the emphasis of the stories are. Okay, second thing, they tell us what to think about. All right, now you, if we pull up real clear politics, um, you know, you can tell whether or not the, the writer likes Trump or he doesn't like Trump or is a Democrat or Republican, most likely. And he's not going to change your mind, but he is going to tell you what to think about. On real clear politics, there'll be about a top. <laughs> Oh, I blow my nose here. That's terrible. Uh, there's a top mm, five or six stories. So, you know, we're thinking about New York. Uh, I think today we're thinking about uh, there's like a uh, the president and the governors are going back and forth about, you know, it's kind of a federalism issue, just to exactly how much power the president has. Can the president tell governors what to do, when to reopen? Um so that's something on everybody's mind. So there's a, there's a four or five top stories, uh, and, you know, uh, all of them in one way or another. I would say if we were to go to real clear politics, there's probably 
six of the seven stories going to be on coronavirus and maybe one of them on maybe bod uh you know there's a there's a there's kind of a me too story on biden right now and that that debate's kind of store uh going on but they're telling us what to think about so i mean we may or may not agree with the article but they're you know they're not telling us about what's going on in africa they're not telling us about what's going on i don't know vietnam uh top six or seven stories so they see you know other stories just don't make it in the gate they signal they tell us what to think about okay last thing horse race coverage you know they tend to focus on winners and losers all right so we know biden's got the domination uh the polls tell us that you know biden's a little up on trump on most of the polls the swing state polls, you know, there's skepticism there as to whether or not that's these polls are accurate. Um, but, um, you know, I can't really tell you what Biden's health care plan is. He's, he's put it out, but I can't really tell you what it is. I know that, um, you know, he's got the nomination. So, so they focus it on who's winning, who's losing. All right, so those are the three roles. There you go. And... All right, so look there, let's see, number three, so we'll come back to this in just a second. Um, so we're looking at bi partisanship in the press. Fake news, we know that word. All right, so the main scene press is kind of center left. It's just kind of center left. Uh, uh, seen it by Republicans to be liberal. Um, and polls have shown that reporters are, in fact, uh, more liberal than the general, general public. Uh, big corporations own, you know, the, the media, so that might pull them to the right a little bit. You know, the, the Sanders candidacy kind of shows that the mainstream press kind of center left. You know, they weren't, uh, they weren't slurping Sanders. They were quite alarmed about Sanders. Um, uh, not quite to the degree they weren't happy with Trump, but, I mean, there was some, some alarm there. So... Uh, kind of center left, kind of right there with Biden. All right. Uh, so then coming out of this period, you know, in the 90s, Fox and MB MSNBC came along. And so Fox is conservative. They call themselves fair and balanced, but they're just kind of a, were kind of created uh, as a uh, uh, reaction to the, to the liberal media. The MSNB MSNBC is... Uh, the liberal count counterpart to that, pretty uh, upfront about its political leanings. Although, again, I'm going to say MSNBC, uh, the the you know the big uh, journalists on MSNBC were not fans of uh, Bernie, so uh, center left. All right, partisan, more partisan than you know ABC and NBC, uh, but center left, and then talk radio tends to be conservative. All right, uh, so then we got, you know, social media. And, uh, I mean, the uh, it's democracy. You know, anybody can post something. Uh, anybody can, you know, have their own, you know, website and Facebook and so forth and comment on things, and there's no editing, you know. Uh, so in Time Magazine... If uh, an article is going to be on Time Magazine, the editors say, you know, you know, we can't just print crap here, or, or else we're going to ruin our reputation. Um, so uh, on the internet, you, you really don't have that, and, and a lot of the and, and the social media. Okay, so there's that one. All right, and hey, let's go up to. So here, I mean, this is really nice, right? So this is put out by something called All Sides. Uh, and so here's the ones that are in the middle. AP, remember, that's a wire service. Bloomberg, you know, we know that. BBC. Uh, NPR articles. Uh, Reuters. Uh, the Hill, you know, we, we use that one. Real Clear Politics, I think, is, you know, they're, they're, they're uh, putting one article on either side. Okay, so then there's the center right right here. Reason, Wall Street Journal, Washington Times, uh, Fox, the, like, uh, the news, not the, not the, 
the on TV stuff, but the Fox, uh, the articles. The Atlantic, it, it pro I'd probably call your top center left publication, Washington Post, New York Times. So there, here's kind of your mainstream media right here, center left. All right, and here's the left. Uh, Mother Jones, the, the editorials on CNN, The Nation, all right, and then here's the right, all right. Uh, so, you know, when you look at, and I'm going to get you to, to do that, when you look at tomorrow's, the morning's Real Clear Politics, check the, you know, the sources, and, you know, your assignment's going to have something to do with determining, you know, the bias, Okay, and so then we'll, this worked out pretty good for us, didn't it? So let's uh, turn it into a number four here. Boom, boom. All right. And we'll hit presentation again. Okay, so you're looking at uh, the limits on the media. Uh, how big a problem is it, you know, the bias? Well, there, there's, there's limits on how effective it is. All right, limit number one. Uh, most people already kind of have their opinions. All right, so, uh, you know, we got our opinions from our parents. We, you know, we've looked at the different things that the socialization process. So generally speaking, you know, the bias of an article is not going to impact us that much. They'll tell us what to think about, but they won't tell us what to think. All right, uh, generally speaking, you know, you get on real clear politics, you read the articles that you agree with, you know. Uh, so our audience, you know, the audiences are real fragmented. Uh, so generally speaking, what we read kind of reinforces what we already thought rather than challenges. So we got to be careful to try to read stuff uh, from a wide array of perspectives. All right, even in the same article, two people read the same article, they focus on different parts of the article. So, you know, they, they focus on the part of the article that they like. Um, there's also a bias towards sensationalism, kind of like the, the yellow journalists. And so um, people are more cynical. You know, I kind of see that uh, with, um, I don't know, the, the you know, the, the variation in opinions on coronavirus. I mean, you know, 20,000 people have died. I mean, you can't say it's, it's nothing. Uh, how big a threat is it to you and your home? Well, you know, there's kind of a range of opinion on that. Um, but people, you know, people tend to be uh, cynical about the media and not trust it, all right? Um... Uh, uh, above and beyond the kind of bias. Okay, um, let's see what I got. Yep, all right. Uh, there's a government agency whose job it is to regulate the media. If you know that per picture, that was a uh, Super Bowl uh, halftime show. Hey, the Super Bowl halftime show this time was, was fairly controversial. Remember when that was the most controversial thing we had to think about was the Super Bowl was, you know, stuff like that. The good old days when people could get together uh, and, in a stadium and so forth. Uh, but um, the FCC, uh, its job is to make sure that the stuff on TV is decent. Uh, the more risque stuff's on later at night. Um, if you know the famous Eminem line, the FCC won't let me be. Uh, in other words, and so like his, you know, his rap lyrics get bleeped out unless it's on, what, serious radio. All right, so generally speaking, over time, the trend is towards deregulation uh, of the media. Uh, and they try to, uh, the media also tries to make, you know, emphasize decency. Once upon a time, the, the government tried to force the media to give equal time to all political views. That's not something that happens so much. So, so things have kind of changed in, in that respect. All right. And that's it. And that's it. Let's see. What do you think? I think that took 15 minutes. It didn't, didn't take a real long time, I don't think. 18. Let's go. Let's say it took 18 minutes. 